If you felt your heart drop right into your stomach when you heard about the UK potentially pushing the retirement age up to 71, that's 71, 71, then it's a good thing that you're here in this video because in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about why you absolutely need to not panic and what you can do to manage retirement, manage your retirement age and manage your expectations of your life, your time, the money you need to earn so that any more headlines about this ridiculous retirement age do not send your anxiety through the roof. And welcome, if you're new here, I talk about money and career and how to make decisions that up level your health, your wealth, and ultimately just help you become filthy rich and happy as well. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will not have missed that I speak about pensions a lot in my content. I talk about the importance of contributing to your pension because contributing to your pension is a really great way to essentially reduce the tax you pay, especially here in the UK. Because if you work for a corporation, the amount of money that you get paid, your taxable income, you can reduce that by making pension contributions because pension contributions, especially if you work for a corporation, are made from your pre-tax salary. So generally, pension contributions have been emphasized as a way to make your money work harder because it's essentially money that you've already earned and usually the money that you put into a pension is invested into funds and you can kind of pick and choose this depending on what pension you have. But generally, it's a really good investment to have. But now with the retirement age potentially going up, this means that time that we have to wait out before we can access that money Money is even greater. And this is the problem and why it's causing a little bit more panic. Right now, the pension age is 66. It's soon to go up to 67 for people who retire between 2026 and 2028. So this new age is a potential increase of three years. Now, three years don't seem that long, but when we try to calculate our retirement goal or the kind of lifestyle we'd like to have at retirement, usually people base it on the number of years you have, i.e. the 4% rule. And I don't know about you, but I think it's the fact that the age begins with a seven that caused me to have that slight heart attack. It paints a picture of what life is at 71. I'm at a stage of my life where I'm helping to take care of grandparents and I can see what life in retirement has been like. I can see what my grandparents have gone through and the matter of fact of the retirement age being pushed up has made me question and want to kind of share the things that we can do to not only maximize our life once we hit that age, if we get to hit that age, and also avoid falling into the trap of relying on that age to eventually kind of enjoy our life. Now, as important as pension contributions are, it's really important not to put all of your eggs in one basket. And what I mean by this is to not rely solely on your pension contributions as your investment strategy for life. And I don't wanna overwhelm you by saying the words investment strategy either, because a lot of people, me included at 23, 24, I had no idea what an investment strategy was. I was barely even trying to save. So what does that mean for young people? It means that when you're young, the money you're contributing to your pension, you won't be able to access that for, let's say you're 20, 21, for literally 50 years. And that's great because that money has 50 years to compound and grow, but not being able to access that until 71 means that you have potentially 50 years ahead of you of working for money, which is a kind of scary thought at 21, not gonna lie. So there are a number of things that you can do to avoid relying on that one goalpost of that pension pot at 71. And one of those things is a stocks and shares ISA. Now I do have a video on investing that goes over the stocks and shares ISA and what it is. So check that out if you want more details. There are also so many amazing videos on YouTube that teach you about ISAs that I really recommend that you watch. But the really important part of a stocks and shares ISA that is beneficial is the fact that a stocks and shares ISA you can access at any point you want. Now with stocks and shares and generally investing into index funds and ETFs is to give that money time for compound interest to do its thing and grow in value. But the point of using a stocks and shares ISA in a beneficial way here is to have a secondary pot of money that is also growing in a very similar way to your pension that you can access earlier if you need to. And it's generally just a safe way to not put all your eggs in one pension contribution basket. Now, obviously, a stocks and shares ISA isn't the only thing you can invest into. There are multiple ways to build up your net worth, and your net worth will be largely made up of the assets that you own or contribute to throughout
throughout your lifetime. So things that you contribute to that are growing in value. So this could be property. This could be, like I said, your stocks and shares ISA. This could be a business. There are loads of different things that will compound and grow in value that you should definitely incorporate into the things that you want to invest time and money into, as well as your pension contributions. Another really important point that this shocking headline had for me is to prioritize my life right now, because essentially the goalpost in the eyes of the government is going to keep moving. So what I'm personally going to do is not going to wait until retirement to do certain things or enjoy certain sums of money, because I had certain goals like doing the North Coast 500 when I was retired or maybe a little bit older. And what you want to avoid doing is getting into that mindset of I'll retire when, and this could be hitting like a monetary net worth amount, hitting like a certain career professional goalpost. But the same thing that applies to not moving goalposts when it comes to general goals applies to retirement right now. It means that, you know, I'm going to try and enjoy the process of life as well as investing into my future, doing both at the same time so that I'm not losing out on either. Because also to be frank, 71 is an age where health will come into play a lot and health will also restrict you from a lot of the things that might be on your list of goals or list of things that you want to do now. Which brings me on to another kind of morbid point is, you know, trying to avoid situations of forced retirement and really prioritizing your health. Something I emphasize a lot in my content is keeping your health and wellness expenses as part of your essentials bucket. And this is something I will preach until I am past retirement age. Not only are you going to be able to actually make more money because you're healthy and physically well, you'll actually get to enjoy life and enjoy life without restrictions. So for me right now, this means I incorporate any PT, gym, physio, any kind of physical wellness related costs into my essentials bucket. I prioritize those costs and I may give up or sacrifice certain elements of my wants in order for those to be non-negotiable parts of my budget so that my health is always on top. What you don't want is to be forced into retirement when you're not actually ready yet. And what I'm also going to try and avoid doing with seeing a retirement age as a goalpost is trying to see life as a number of times I get to do things that I want to do. And I remember listening to a podcast with Sahil Bloom and he was talking about his, you know, his light bulb moment, the time that really transformed his life and took him from rock bottom to where he is now. And his friend asked him how many times he got to see his dad and he replied once a year. And his friend, I think his dad was about 65 at this time, and his friend just replied matter of factly, oh, that means you'll get to see him 15 more times then. But it made him realize the value of life that he had in front of him. For him, he saw 15 years to try and make as much money as possible. That mindset shift really showed him that, you know, 15 was not that big a number. There's so many statistics that are quite scary to look at, but really help you to take a step back and want to take that action over your life, the life that you have in front of you right now. Stats like if you're 55 right now and you're married, you have up to 22 summers left with your partner. And this is stats. So this could be way less, could be way more. If you think about, you know, an average lifespan for an average human being, you potentially only have 87 summers in your lifetime. And how many Many of those are you going to hold off enjoying until you're 71? And that's even if you make it to 71. So the point I'm really trying to drill home to you watching right now and also to me, retirement comes when retirement comes. I'm not going to put all my eggs in one pot. I'm not going to be contributing only to my pension. I contribute to stocks and shares ISA. I am trying to build a business. I am trying to diversify all the assets that I'm building in my life so that I have access to things other than my pension to sustain me and my lifestyle. And I'm not using my pension as a goalpost to enjoy life. It's not a threshold. I am I'm going to try and enjoy life, the life I have in front of me right now, the number of summers I have, I want to maximize them because who knows if I'll even make it to 71. So if you're young, take advantage of your youth and diversify your assets, start investing, start learning how to invest. And if money in general is giving you loads of anxiety right now and this pension age and all of this stuff is just making you really, really get overwhelmed, I have a video on what to do if money and financials gives you anxiety. So I would watch that first if that's where you're at. But leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of retirement. What is your opinion on retirement ages, retirement funds, and how we should embrace life in the here and now while also balancing the fact that we need to have a future that we can look forward to at the same time. And if you're still here, thanks for watching so much. Give me a like and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.